Good morning. Uh, so now I I, uh, I have an hour or fifty five minutes. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what I wanted to talk about today is uh, the product that I briefly or we briefly announced yesterday, and it's all about. Um, a client way of looking at things. How do clients see the network, right? So, so we're going to go through a couple of PowerPoint slides, and then we're going to jump into uh, a live demo, right? Uh, you all got a a, a uh, USB stick, which is a license. We license it in this way. All right. So we license it this way. So you have a USB stick, and there's this Air Mobile collector there, and. Um, so you, you, you can just run it on any, any PC. Not that complicated at all. It sits there. And the way it looks is if we go uh, here. So what does it do? Basically, it starts with pinging two locations. Yeah, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> pinging two locations. Uh, these are here. We plugged in here that's a lo uh, that's the gateway that's the local gateway for the um, for the hotel network if you're using one right and it says 5 milliseconds oh sorry 5 seconds that's the ping interval every 5 seconds there's a ping sent to this address all right at the same time there's another host we chose our mobile.se could be google.com but in real life it would be your sort of well, the first would be near IP, and then would be far end IP. It could be a, a application critical server, something that you would like to verify connectivity to. So two locations at the same time. Then you choose, um, then you choose which card it runs on. There's only one on my PC, Wi-Fi that is. And basically, there's all you need to know right now. Oh, may, well, maybe upload settings. So with one minute interval, we're sending data to this server. You're going to get uh, possibility possibility to log in there after the session, and uh, so you, you can see your own data and somebody else's data. It's kind of, you know, let, let's let's have fun together approach. So, let me go back to the presentation for now on. We're going to be going back to to this as well. So the client settings here's the here's the screen. Uh, the previous screen, so, so uh, well, I think we explained it. One thing I did not say is that here you get some sort of a live information. So every fifth second, if you choose five second interval, you're going to get some, yeah, data. So you see it's alive. Then again, in a real life, it sits in the background and nobody's concerned with that. And it's just for us to set it properly and see whether it's, it's kind of going. So what is it really? I, I mentioned at the beginning. So what we do believe is, okay, you can test your network and see how it performs, but it's in the end the client that sort of masks all this behavior. The client has a problem quite often, more often than not. It will, it will cause in, in, in very, very bad quality of experience for, for the end user. And while we have good visibility, for, for, for uh, when it comes to network infrastructure, we have very little normally when it comes to clients. But then again, uh, where's the problem network or client that you, you would really like to know? So what do we do? Imagine you have those PCs running somewhere there. One of them is yours. They connect to access points. And in this, in this slide, you see we have a local gateway, which is quite often the case. Uh, and then you have another test towards an, some sort of application server you would like to verify, whether it's still on or not, right? So that there are logs being created. So on this USB, you, when you run it, it, one day will be a log like a CSV file. This is the file that is continuously being sent up to a server with one minute interval. So it's just, just incrementing it. So these guys go to a server or, or analyzer, as it's called, and then you have a number of interesting things to look at. We're going to, we're going to do it pretty soon, right? Um, so 
yeah, I think we're going to flip over through this and have a real life examples. I just want to mention that we now run an SQL database in, in the background. We have some people doing some, some uh, sort of uh, business intelligence, just, just getting the data from the database and, and, and trying to further, um, to further analyze the data and, and, and get their angle on things. So it doesn't have to be like we are presenting it, right? Uh, well, I really wanted to test it, and some people thought, no, we, we don't do it. So we're going to do it. We dive in uh, right away. I have a few slides more to come after that, but uh, that will be just kind of a, kind of a wrap-up. Um, all right, so normally you log in. You see wlpc.airmobile.se is the website. And what you see is, is you see, oh, there you go. You see, when you first log in, you see something to call an SLA. It, it's a calendar type of view, and then you see a day, and then each day has some parameters. So this is yesterday. This is today, right? Um, so what does it tell us about yesterday? It tells us there were 21 alarms, if you will. Uh, it tells us there were nine different clients reporting. So not that many of you are were willing to, but that's okay. <laughs> it's actually got a really nice data. Uh, I hope we'll be we'll have a nice nice uh, case study there. And and five of them didn't really match the the required SLA. Uh, it doesn't look all that good. Partly because when I looked at data, I saw that some of you guys used not did not use the, the hotel network, we used the WLPC network. And then again, in this case, the, the IPU pinging, the first one IP, that gateway, w wouldn't be valid. So you would have ping loss towards that server, obviously. Right? So what, what can we do? So that, that's kind of top level view on things. So if you go and click on these alarms, you're going to go to something that's called advisor for that particular day. So what it does, it lists Alarms, as we call it. So this is those, these are those disconnections as they happened, right? So you have, say, this one. At this time, duration was that long, two hours. Again, part of it could be due to this, uh, another gateway they're using. Which AP was it? A client, you can have an alias. Which channel? And, and we have some sort of intelligence trying to tell you, give you some tips. What could that be? We, we, we can go back to that after. Each of, those, each of those events have analysis button to dig further into the data. But before we do that, I want to go to coverage, right? By the way, all these columns you can sort. So that's duration. Kind of makes sense. Show me the l longest the biggest problem at the top. But you can say, all right, uh, show me channels. Okay, there, there was something there, 36, right? Or a client. Oh, Matthias, doesn't look good for you. Not for me either. <laughs> well, duration it is normally. Uh, if I go to coverage, uh, which, is, which is some sort of a table telling you, summarizing what we've seen, and that's all client-based data. So what are we looking at? Looking at all those clients and access points. So clients, there were like eight of those, nine. And their connection failure time. Again, what is the time that they did not perform? That We're going to go to settings and see what that means. What is the... How much is it in percent? So 12%, that not very good. Average RSSI for that client. So, so if you're looking at average RSSI, that's actually interesting things to thing to look at. You can sort it and say, yeah, that's my yoga. That that has a, a strange RSSI. Now we're touching to another thing where RSSI is actually something that that uh, well it depends. We just take it from the card. If the card tells you in DBMs you have a DBM value. If that's what it what it gives you, that's what you what you get, right? Uh, but if you if, if you just take away this, you'll see that there is a there's a number of other, other um, stations, and they're roughly, you know, there's a good signal strength, nothing to worry about. 
The next line here is average available access points. That's an interesting matrix. Because when they scan around, they will try to see the neighbors that belong to the same network. So on the average, this guy sees 6.3 access points, right? For that particular day. Uh, well, it could help you. It could help you, especially when you're looking, say, the same metrics that are available for access points. And again, the data comes from the clients. So if, how would you read it? If I just go like this. So there are some of the access points where there is no extra access point to connect to. So if the clients are connected to this BSS ID or this or this or this, there's only one access point. I, this access point itself, not, nothing else. So should this fail, there's nowhere they can roam to, right? And it has to do with the fact that you set up a different B, uh, SSIDs and that might be just a unique BSSID with just one access point running it. And there are some other ones, if you, if you sort it here. Here's like, wow, th th this doesn't seem to have a problem with that. So that, that's just a table, but I think we all are more interested in going to analysis, really. Show me what happened. Show me why, and uh, let, let's analyze it really, the data. And we can come back here, but if we go back to advisor, we keep the same day, which is yesterday. Uh, and uh, I think I went through this data yesterday, and I found this really, really particularly interested. interesting, this one. Um, as I say, a lot of those errors come from the fact that we're pinging the wrong gateway, which is sort of, you know, not what you want to look at. So we go to analysis, what it does, it takes us to analysis view, surprise, surprise, which is, to begin with, your ping graph. Zoomed on this particular event. So what are we, what are we looking at? That's the ping times to begin with, very simple, no RF data. Towards two hosts, you see the red one is the gateway, and the green one, it's our mobile.se, but it could be your application server. So if things are okay here, you, would, you have the volumes you would expect. You have like 2.5, two milliseconds towards the gateway, 40 milliseconds towards your application server. But somewhere here, things go bad, right? And, and see the time. What happened just after 5 p.m. yesterday? Right. We have this building, building session. So this particular PC, I mean, if we stretch it out, just to give us a little bit of perspective here, because we don't have to be looking at this, it, it was doing OK. Oh, there is a little glitch here. But it was doing okay, right? Until this thing came. It couldn't cope with it. I'm just looking there. I wish Rob was there because I didn't tell, look, would you wouldn't you like to know this for some of your clients and maybe exchange your students with that? But okay, what do we see in here? We see there is this this BSSI indicator. So basically you're roaming in between. Right? Somewhere here, things at the client decided to roam. I, I thought, it, it, it's not really working really nicely for me, so let, let, me, let me roam to something else. Okay, let's see. It didn't get any better. So, but l let's look, it's all aligned here. We have RF data here, right? So if you're looking at this, and, and I maybe get a bigger perspective again. So there's two radio parameters we, we get. The red one is RSSI. Here's the scale. And the green one is SQ, signal quality. That's what Windows gives us through Windows APIs. So we'd like to have signal to noise ratio, right? But that's as good as you can get. So OK, we can see that signal RSSI is kind of the same here. But when we started doing things, the signal quality went down. You know, the radio store interferences, you can guess that something happened there. So that would be, you could think, a primary reason for, for those times going up, right? 
Sometimes when you he see one of the pings going up and one staying in a proper like two, three milliseconds value, you know, all right, the Wi-Fi works. I can ping my gateway, but I'm not going any further. So at least, you know, Wi-Fi is okay. You can say, yeah, the, the problem is somewhere else. But that's not the case in general in this particular case, right? So again, now th this is where client decided to roam. It's actually interesting. And again, I remember what Rob said yesterday. He said, all right, the clients typically roam at negative 65 or whatever. But now it did roam even if it was like negative 46, 48. So that kind of stays in line with what he presented, saying that, well, there's a lot of traffic. There's a lot. They tried to find a better channel anyway, a better access point. And that's what this client did. It did roam, right? Here was the roaming event. Uh, the the, the uh, ping times did not get much better. I just stretch it out. So that's our ping event. It didn't get much better. The radio, yeah, I, it went somewhat better here. Signal quality a little bit, but RSSI a little bit. However, this is the real thing. Um, okay, what else can we see there? We have this table. So this table is basically the raw data as it comes from our collectors. And what we see here is a timestamp, the host you're pinging, minus one is a ping, it's, it, it's the way for us to say that it's like ping loss. Nothing comes through from that particular host. From that host you have ping number two, then you have SSID, then you have a BSSID, channel, signal quality, RSSI, and then you have this RSSI list which is the, the neighbors that have the same SSID, right? So they do belong to the same network. So your client could potentially choose one of those. So, yeah, was there a question? No? Uh, okay, uh, so this is the data we see. And, and if we carry on here, we see that, all right, it, it came from this, I don't know, that's the, uh, 23, it went back to 9A. That's the same color, it's 9A. It went back here. It wasn't happy with this. And look, <laughs> the time scale, it's like 40 minutes, 510 to 550, roughly. It wasn't, go it wasn't going any good for this particular client. But this, if we put ourselves here, this is where, where uh, <laughs> well, now we know what it is, started working uh, or connected towards the mini, mini computer, right? So that would explain that there's a very good explanation when <laughs> you couldn't ping anywhere from there. Right? You see this, this color. So we have those fixed settings, and, and then obviously this time it kind of excludes that. But let, let me see what happens there. So it's there, and obviously our data is minus one and minus one, meaning ping lost to both of the servers. Here's the SSID, here's the BSSID uh, channel. Signal quality is excellent, RSI is excellent. And you have just one access point. Surprise, surprise. There's one access point that belongs to that network. And of course, the value would be sort of the same. There might be some differences. Because what we see, actually, is those values typically come from, you know, Windows every now and then they do scan networks for networks uh, or, or for the same network uh, just to prepare before roaming events, so, so be, build a database. So this data could be old. So obviously don't do it so often. RSSI is fresh because you still all the time maintain the RSSI value towards your current access point. Uh, so, well, of all, if we click elsewhere, say here, so you have in this case, you have like three access points, right? Or, or more, so, so, so you, that's a total number including the one you already connected to. And that was the number, if you remember, in this, in this uh, column telling you how many neighbors you have. So that's, that was the average of that. So we take a data for that particular client, for that particular day, whenever it was reporting, and giving you the average. Well, it's actually a lot of interesting things that can happen. You can see that some clients are very lively. They would like to see scan. For, for new access points, I would like to build this table quite actively, proactively. Some others are, they, they, they sit happy. If they are happy, they are happy. They don't do much of a, of a scanning there, really. 
Um, and, and then the interesting here is, okay, we have the, the blue one is obviously uh, obviously the, 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 the PC we would, you would test uh, the test we run against. And then you come back to this, the green one. Uh, and then obviously you, you, you get the connectivity again and then somehow it chooses to roam again. Couldn't tell why, but it's roams. So I, I found it here. There's a lot of roaming events. I don't know whether it has to do anything with the network or... It seems like clients seem to roam with no particular reason. But then again, we have visibility in some of the things, not all. I just had a question for you. <clears throat> it looks like the data shows uh, at 1810 mm -hmm. you roamed to a different channel mm -hmm. while you still had really good ping times. Right. And but you actually went to an AP with the lower RSSI. Correct. So here, yes, it did. And I've seen a lot of those. I, I, normally, that's not the case. Uh, could we say that perhaps this particular client roaming algorithm are, of course, based on RSSI, but perhaps something else? Obviously, obviously something obviously, else. <laughs> as well. So it could be, I don't know, TX rate upwards, like uplink, or it could be... I don't know, retries, things like that. We don't know that, right? That's kind of a black box, roaming algorithm. But the part about this is you're seeing something you don't normally have access to. No, yeah, that's, that's correct. So you, do, you, you can see that. I guess I owe some explanation here for this view because we did a little bit of a tricky approach here. Um, we have two values to play around. I'm saying this because you all are going to get access to this for like at least to the next conference. With your single license, you can play around. Again, the idea is we, we dump the data to a common space, common area, so you can see somebody else's data. That's not a problem, I hope. Uh, you can learn how, it, uh, how to use it. You can use it for your own debugging purposes or whatever purposes that might be. So what we did, there are, there, you see, the pings normally, we noticed, there is no physical value with the pings. It's not like temperature, it goes up and down very slowly. It's not like RSSI that is kind of going up and down slow. Pings, one ping could be one millisecond, the next one could be ping drop. So we average those things, right? So it's smoothing factor. That's just a moving average for this particular view. What happens if we run one? Which is no averaging, obviously. So this is how it looked in reality. That's one part of the explanation. Another part of the explanation is, what do we do when we have ping out, ping uh, no answers, like ping timeouts? We try different things, actually. You, you could have, like, you stop drawing the, the, this all together, but you don't see them very much. You can have a vertical red line telling you this is where, where you know, it didn't go through. But we decided to do something else. We decided to give a ping loss a value. I know it sounds strange. So these values there, or actually this value, which you can change, is, is normally 150% of a worse ping. So whatever the ping was, say it was roughly, uh, well, 2,000 milliseconds, it took 150% of that, and this is the value for your, for your, for your ping loss. So if, if you use it together with smoothing factor, it's so easy, if you look at the entire day, it's so easy to pick up the worst moments. Because you see this one, how it's building up. If I just take out the smoothing factor, you see there was just, if I zoom in in here, it went obviously right away to ping loss. But it was averaging over 10 samples, and it was moving average, so you see this slope growing up until it gets to the top, which means you had 10 consecutive ping losses. So you, it's very intuitive, we think, to find it directly. You're just there. Whenever it reaches the top, you're already there at, 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 at 10 ping losses. And there's another way of looking at it. That's the entire day. If you look, uh, I'm not sure, say 100, you can have a long time trending on this. Say every time lunchtime something happens. Right? Interesting. So, so it's, it's a nice feature. You might want to, you can change them. Just viewing, presenting the data, just to give you a better example what, what you're after? Are you after long time trending? Or are you normally, when you're zoomed in, and analyzing dot for dot, like, then you're probably better off not averaging at all. So that would be one smoothing factor. So, um, so that's that. And, and all right, we, 
we have possibility to, uh, if I go here, so you see, we know who that was, right? So we, we can go to settings. I wanted to explain a couple of things because you're going to use it, right? Hopefully. Um, so that, that uh, client is what? It's 4C. So you can go to settings. And here's aliases, 4C. Where's that? Uh, here. So you can say. And, and, and save it, right? So if we now come back, oh, oh, it, can, it can be like this as well. You're going to have, hopefully, Martin's PC here. So, so all these MAC addresses now. So it, it's easy for you to find a client so you know which one to switch. Um, so, so going back to settings one more time and walking you through what we do really. Alarm condition. This is where we have those, those clocks and telling you there was like 20 events today that did not work correctly. So this is, you can set it. So whatever, we, we work in number of pings as a, as a time unit. So the quickest we can go is five second interval. This has a lot to do like when we send out pings, it can be quite long and normally we realize that Windows has an upper limit of four seconds to get the data bag, otherwise it kind of drops it all. So it said, okay, five minutes, you cannot do it more often. Then again, you don't really want to destroy your network with, with pings either. So five seconds it is, so that means in 50 seconds, if you have consecutive 10 pings over 150, that, that, that's pretty bad actually. Oh, well, it depends. You can set it obviously. So you set it yourself. Now, when we play around, this is a global setting. So whenever somebody changes it, your data presentation will change obviously as well. Uh, then you can send an email, it's n nothing very sophisticated, just send an email whenever that happens. You have an email list, which again is global for this particular console. So, and so that's the alarm condition, that's what we count as a, as a separate event, we listed, we listed in the list of those events and we can go to analysis, all the way to the right. But we also can count something else connection failures. I mean, we have this SLA approach. You would like to see, say your service level is 99.9 .9 or 99.3. So what we do is we say, okay, when do we break this SLA? Whenever we have more than two pings over 150, we already start counting this time. This is the time that things don't work as they should. And then we accumulate that time over a day and give you the percentage. So there is no alarm, I mean you could, but that happens quite frequently if you set those two ping values. And uh, normally it's something to give you this, this, this global number on, on the main page, SLA page, so you would then see 89.72 for that particular day, right? So, so that's the story, I'm just trying to think if there's Something else I should go, yeah, advisor, we, we, advisor that, that's a big name for a couple of algorithms. It's basically things telling you like there was like roaming related things like whenever our alarm starts when you connect it to one SSID, sorry, BSSID and then ends up when it's another, we declare the roaming related event. So, well, so that you know that the, during this there was a roaming. It doesn't have to be a cause, it could be a symptom, it could be anything. It's just that it happened during the roaming. Then we have sticky client algorithm. We, uh, last year I believe I had a, quite a nice presentation. It wasn't live, it was PowerPoint slides on sticky clients. So basically it says, whenever you're holding to an access point which is below negative 80, and you have other access points, at least in this delta 20, 25 dB stronger, we know that from the, from the neighbors list, and you're still holding on to this one, we declare you a sticky client. You could change it, that's, that's very rough. I mean, you would probably see a sticky client type of behavior with a lot less than 25 dB difference. But then, then again, when we say it's sticky client, it probably is. So, but then again, you, you can use it the way you like. And then you have host, uh, host issue, this is where you have uh, 
basically one of the host answers, the other don't, the other doesn't. We have a lot of customers that say, yeah, yeah, the Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi doesn't work, as usual. I think with your words, like, whatever connects to an access point, and when you have a problem, it's a Wi-Fi problem. So you say, no, 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 Wi-Fi works. And this is your host issue, telling you that more or less, one ping went beautifully, like two, three milliseconds, and the other one went through the roof, or they were like ping losses all the time. And then they say, oh, yeah, we have this problem with this router. And surprise, surprise, it happened for all the clients at the same time, of course. Because that was a global issue, not just a client issue, that particular case. <laughs> what I forgot is coverage insufficiency. It's very similar to this, however much simpler. If you don't have any other access point, and you're below minus 80, right? Then it means that there's no other access point to go to. And if there is an a, a, um, alarm generated, we give it a, a tag coverage insufficiency. Because we do think that this was caused by coverage insufficiency. You're holding an access point, you have nobody else, no, 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 no other else access point, and you have minus 80 or lower. So, so that's not like a rocket science exactly. SMTP, that's the one we have. So we just hope you're not going to use it as a spam generator. Um, collector connection. So in this collector, which is the exit file you run on your PC, so the brave ones did, uh, you have basically two things to enter. And these are those. Well, actually three, how often you send the data. We would buffer the data. Remember, it was one minute. So whatever you did during one minute, up, up. If it doesn't work, obviously sometimes it doesn't because you have those alarms, right? So, so when you're offline, everything is stored, and then it's sent up. So analyze the server and the port number. We thought a lower port number is good because you are less likely to have firewall issues. We started with high numbers, and a lot of customers, ah, you know what, this is, I, I have to go, you know, setting up this, it was very easy. You don't need any endpoints, you can ping right away. And they were like, oh yeah, we, we, we have to take those files, the log files, and upload them through the GUI, which you can do as well. You would then do it through logs, we call them logs, and upload logs. And then we'll just end up here. So one log, a concept of log is a data that came from one particular client or, or MAC address for one day. So it'll just, if you carry on running, it'll, it'll go to midnight and then it'll close the file and it'll start a new log. So the log is maximum one day. Could be shorter. Most of the times it is actually. Um, I saw another interesting thing. If we can go... Clicking on the lower part will take you to logs directly. So I think it was this one. And, and you don't have to say who you are, but I like the dedication to testing. So that, that was, was it today? Yeah, I think it was today. Let's start with uh, the usual stuff. See the data, it, it, there's no problems here, generally. I mean, okay, there are some peaks there, but look at the scale. We're looking at, well, well, well below 100 milliseconds. What is interesting, though, it's middle of the night. How it roams? Why? I don't know. Let's look. Uh, so here is the first roam. Uh, let's go to the smoothing factor. Oh, I'm sorry. RF. Well, explain that. It went from negative 40 to negative 52. The red one. And... As a result, the signal quality went from 99 to 88. Cool, right? I don't know why, but it did. Then again, we don't have visibility at all, but say if you're running multiple of those, it doesn't have to be each and every client, right? It could be, say, 10 of them, and you're playing around with features, 11V, 11K. How do they roam? Do they follow? Because we are agnostic. I mean, we sit on the top of everything that the client does. Do we have 5 gig support? Yes. Do we have 11K support? Yes. Or no, depending if the client can do it. Because we're above all this, right? So that was a strange round, middle of the night. Uh, if you carry on, uh, we can zoom out a bit. There was two rounds. So, well, it thought, okay, let me go back to this one, the stronger one. It did for a very short while, and then it went back there. I don't know why, but, but that, that's okay, I guess, I would think. I, I think the funny part here is, 
some of you are already laughing, uh, is that the host we are pinging. And, 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 and again, that, that, that's fine. I, I like the, uh, normally we would say ping the important ones, the application critical. So there was apparently, uh, you, you know, you don't have a local gateway. You have this one instead. And then you have a mobile.se. I mean, uh, okay, business and pleasure. <laughs> well, anyway, so, so the thing is, you would, obviously you can choose that yourself and depending what you want to test. Our experience says that quite often it's not that great to ping your local gateway if you have a lot of clients because the local gateways, they prioritize, you know, forwarding traffic. That's what they're made for. Turning out packets could take a while. So you might end up having lower pings from your remote server than from a gateway. And there's nothing to do with gateway being further away or anything. It just it takes time for it to turn away the packet and send the response to you. So you might want to ping another PC or something else that is, you know is going to handle the ping traffic uh, pretty well, like local thing. And the idea is very simple again. Of, of course, you can choose it, but the idea is let's have something that the nearest thing you can ping and, and then your application critical server. But it's up to you to choose it. Um, I, I think that's kind of more or less it, really. For the demo, then I have a couple more slides. Questions, comments? Go ahead. Aha, uh -huh, I don't have a mic, of course. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, I mean, you can use whatever you like, uh, obviously. And then again, uh, if we go to settings, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah, it, it, that's kind of a part of a problem. You go in there and change it, all of the other guys uh, will, will not be able to send it, the data to, to it. So, well, it's probably, probably not the system, the, the way it's laid out right now, it's you know, not towards community type of testing. Yeah, to, and we just set up a dedicated server just, just for you guys. Right, I'll, I'll do that. that. That's actually a pretty good idea. And another thing I, I thought about when you just said that, or actually a couple of milliseconds before, was that like, uh, don't delete the data, or at least don't delete somebody else's data. Uh, that would be a nice thing to have. And don't change the password, because that would also mess up things. Uh, right? But yeah, we'll, we'll do that. We'll do that. But it's kind of common sense, I would assume. Uh, or, I don't know. Yeah? That would change everyone. It was, it's a listening port. So we, this would be listening on that port. And of course, as long as you know which port that is, you would then go, we, we can just take that and say settings. This is, this is where you are looking at. So upload settings, so if you kill it, upload settings, you can go through this and say, all right, this is where we're listening, this is the port you wanna to talk to. So, I mean, as long as this follows, no problem. But then again, it's difficult to enforce that when you have like 100 people trying to follow that. And as I say, it's basically it. Uh, I think it's interesting to see what happens when you have a lot of, those clients on the same network, and you don't have those silly errors where you're pinging the long, wrong gateway and everything, because that kind of spoils your stats, because it does. Uh, so when you set it up properly, you can basically see and compare. What we do is say like two or three for each type of clients, and, and, and just see how it goes. You, you build understanding what, what the normal thing is after a day or two, and then you see anything that sticks out rather quickly. Yeah, it, all this, what we do, ends up in SQL database. And, and as I say, we're we, we, we working with, with partners and, and with customers to just to, to get the data from the database. And that's uh, getting to the next step, trying to analyze the data on a larger scale a bit. Because you have a lot of data here. It could be very, very valuable. 
right? So if you just can compare things against things, you can learn a lot of things. Uh, so back to uh, the presentation. I survived the presentation. That's good. So now you can know where to go. I was, that's a multi-user, obviously, but then if everybody went, I don't know, we test like three, four, five consecutive concurrent connections. Then, So basically you go there, use the admin, use the password, and you're there. And you can see whatever we, this is where we were at, looking at the data. Free to use. Uh, just think about it. Don't change too many things. We're going to send out an email. Uh, think that your data is also available to others. So... That's. You see? You have to flip it. Coming. I know. I see it coming. It, it, we've had it for a while. We kind of waited, and there's like two more coming relatively soon, I hope. So that's, uh, that's the answer to it. Okay, so I think I already said that. Uh, so it will stay there for a while, the server, unless it crashes. Then we take it as a beta testing and report to you and set up a new server. And then maybe half of the data is gone or all of the data. No. Uh, so, so just go on and use it. Um, feel free to post questions and, and you know, contact us if you feel like that's something what you want to do. Uh, we will like to help. We have... For, Guys like you, we have done something like this, uh, which is a little server, and then we have like a package of three of those, but that's, we, we license them currently on, on those USBs, so that's like, uh, you know, how you can grow, and any, any, any USB client could go anywhere. And again, that's just a memory, that's just an exit file, and some setting files, and, and all the logs end up there, so you're, you're basically as far as possible, as far as possible from the actual PC. In a sense that you're not, you don't have to go through. Quite often, I don't know whether that's your experience, where you go to big customers and say, oh, we, we have this image for all our PCs. And to change it, if you want to install something, yeah, that would take two months or three, depending how it lines up. I mean, kind of exaggerating, but not much. It, it's a big process. So we have just an exit file. You don't install anything. You don't have to do that. You just double click it and you get it to auto start or start up and, and just if you feel like it, and it runs in the background. All right. Any further questions? Any, any questions? Carry on. Yeah, go Yell, on. Anders. It'll take a while to get back there. Right. <laughs> yeah. Do I, have you had requesting something like uh, other type of traffic testing? I mean, you, you could, for instance, want to try to test a specific application, and you typically have set it up with quality of service, so you want to make sure that that type of traffic is getting through yeah. correctly. Right, yeah, that, that comes, probably not like top three, but maybe top five uh, questions, like a feature request. We thought about it, and that's probably going to make it in some form because that's what you would like to see. This is basic connectivity test, right? Right now, as it is. Because most of our current customers, they realize that this is our problems. Quite a lot. The, the industry or, or the operators, it just doesn't work. Wi-Fi doesn't work. And you might have a lot of things you can do when you're on site. When you're, when you're off site, you cannot do it. You cannot just think to go there and, and, and do the testing, right? Um, I'm just looking at time. I'm Right, uh, let me see. That was, I believe, here somewhere. 2.3.1? Two to three to one? Oh. <laughs> right, that's what I mean. It's coming very, 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 very soon. It, it's one of the top of the list. It is top one? Top two, maybe. Uh, to see the, what was the version and what is the host name and, and those kind of stats that, so, that you understand what you've done. Because now when you do like kind of focus testing, say version 3, Contra version 4, you sort of have to know about it. So if you know which, which is which, it might take like three of 
the same hardware, two of the version three, three of version four, run it for a week or two, maybe a day or two, and already there you see the difference. And you know, all right, these guys don't roam, or roam badly, or whatever. So yeah, it's coming, really, really soon. Hopefully to the next WLPC in Phoenix. <laughs> all right. No matter, does and then doesn't. Yeah. There is Renia, I think. It does. That's true. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, well, we, we're looking at other operating systems. You said Linux, right? Or what do you say? Uh, Mac. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's like... Right. That's exactly... <laughs> we, we kind of limit the resources, but yes. Again, uh, top on the list is uh, Android. Um, Windows CE, don't laugh, or go ahead. There's a lot of there's a lot of those scanners, like barcode scanners. You know that. So th this is where this seems to be uh, extremely important. And and I couldn't. It, it's amazing how how long time they survive out there. And there seems to be new ones coming. And still Windows CE or Windows Mobile. What was the ne next one? So and they probably have problems. Or, or we know they have problems, and, and uh, we, we just want to, you know. Yes, correct. Right, right. Okay. That's an interesting thing. It did not make it to top three, I can say, this one. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, we could potentially, once we have an algorithm we, uh, to pick up things and put things on the side, so to speak, because now it's just a table, so it's expecting data. Once we have this, we can then start and go and see if there's any way of kind of customizing it so we kind of give you a possibility to yeah I w I'm just interested in this one this one and this one period right most of them well most of the customers don't want all that much maybe perhaps at least we didn't hear so much demand for all those settings default settings you're right that would be interesting to know I guess so yes <laughs> 